We're now going to look at the hydrolysis reactions of esters. So we better just explain what hydrolysis is. Hydrolysis is the chemical breakdown of a substance by reaction with water. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to break the ester apart by reacting it with water. But it's not just water. You can have two types of hydrolysis. You can have acid hydrolysis or alkaline hydrolysis. But anyway, in both reactions, it's this bond here that's broken. That's the ester bond there. So we'll deal with acid hydrolysis first. The conditions for the reaction are you need to re reflux the ester with some dilute aqueous acid. So I'm choosing hydrochloric acid for this one. You could use dilute sulfuric acid. So this is the start of our equation here. Remember we're going to break this bond. So that bond's going to break. So if you have a think about what could be produced, and I always say to my students, think of water as in two parts, HOH. And hopefully that will help you to see what's going to be produced. So we're going to get CH3, C double bond O, OH, and We've got an H left for the water, which will obviously go on with that O there. CH3, OH. So we are making a carboxylic acid and an alcohol. So effectively, what we've done is we've reversed the esterification process. So an ester reacts with water in the presence of acid and produces carboxylic acid and alcohol. So we'll do another one of these. So we'll we'll hydrolyze ethyl one, two, three, four, ethyl butanoate. We'll hydrolyze that with aqueous hydrochloric acid. So the equation has the water in it and we're gonna break we're gonna break it apart here, remember? So we're going to get CH3, CH2, CH2, COOH, and we're going to get the alcohol, CH3, CH2, OH. So if you acid hydrolyze ethyl butanoate, you're going to make butanoic acid and ethanol. If we look at the alkaline hydrolysis of esters now, so we've got the conditions there. We need to reflux the ester with aqueous alkali. So I'm going to use aqueous sodium hydroxide. You could use aqueous potassium hydroxide if you wanted. But I'm going to do this in a slightly different way because the, the products are slightly different in this one. So the first thing I'm going to look at is, well, what's going to happen to this ester? It's going to be hydrolyzed. It's going to be broken up by the water, the aqueous part of the sodium hydroxide. So remember, we're going to break this bond here. So if you think about it, what will we get? We'll get CH3, COOH, and CH3OH. So the water's going to do that. Now, factor in the fact that we've got some sodium ions present from the sodium hydroxide. So what will that do? that will create a salt. So instead of getting the carboxylic acid with alkaline hydrolysis, we get the carboxylate salt. So we're going to get CH3 COO minus Na plus. So we still get the alcohol, but we get the carboxylate salt instead. So hydrolyze, splits it up, but we've got a factor in, we've got metal ions present from the alkali. So I'll do the equation for that now. So you can see in the equation for alkaline hydrolysis, we actually put the alkali into the equation, whereas with acid hydrolysis, we didn't put the acid in, we put a water molecule in. So here's one with potassium hydroxide as the alkali, so we've got the ester 
ethyl, one, two, three, four, butanoate with potassium hydroxide. The water splits the ester up and we're going to get the potassium salt of the um, carboxylic acid. So we're going to get potassium, butanoate and ethanol. We'll just finish with the uses of esters now. So I've got four cards there with esters on. Quite complicated looking esters, but hopefully you can see that they are all esters. We've got the R group, C double bond O, single bond O, then another R group there. So this one's called terpenyl butyrate, and that's used as a cherry flavoring. So esters tend to have nice, pleasant, sweet smells and flavors and so they're used as flavorings. We've got one here that's used um, as a cinnamon flavor. Again, single bond O, single bond O, R group, R group either side. And this one here, ethyl lactate, is used as sort of a butter, creamy sort of flavor. And again, there's the ester group there. And here's a honey flavoring, this one here. And another use of esters is in their use in soap manufacture. And you'll see this feature in another video about fats and triglycerides. So esters are used as flavorings and they're also used to make soap.